We're good. We're good. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Melanie Newman and um, I've been away for a little bit. So um, welcome to all the newcomers who are watching and thank you for joining us. And today I have the amazing Janelle Austin with us. I have worked with Janelle and competed with Janelle for well over, yeah, 10, over 10 years, years. My God. a long time. So we know each other pretty well. So Janelle has just joined our team um, and you're going to be featuring in most of our videos. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> our YouTube live every Monday night so it's Monday night at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Stand Standard, Standard Time, time. Um, so Janelle has worked mostly with gum dogs and spaniels yeah um, love the spaniels the springer spaniels Irish water spaniel the bigger breed so I'm I'm a little dog person and Janelle is a, the larger dog the larger dog so we work great together um so thank you for joining us thank you it's so exciting I'm so happy to have another member with us I and know. I'm um, so excited it's, so it's gonna great. be great lots of new content coming up so we have the amazing Shelby with us today. If she'll wake up. She's a bit sleepy at the moment, aren't you, girl? So she's a classic lab and she came in about an hour ago and she actually hasn't really got up. And when she did get up, <laughs> her tail knocked a few things off the table. And um, so she is a classic Labrador retriever, <laughs> not doing a lot. So tonight we're going to teach you guys um, how to de-shed your lab. So even though it's a winter in Australia, we still have to de-shed them and we still need to remove the dead, dull coat. And we're going to go into that information a little bit further. And we're also going to talk about the history. So Janelle will take you through the history. Um, a little bit about Labradors. Labradors in general, general. And we'll go through the different tools that we're going to be using tonight as well. So um, Janelle will take us through yeah. a little bit of the history. Yeah, so this is Shelby, guys. She will wake up, hopefully, enough for us to groom her, get, get the brush going through and get her undercoat out, hopefully. Um, so Shelby's a, a black female lab. She's 10 years old, her senior. <laughs> um, and she's, you know, quite happy being a family dog. As you can see, she's quite relaxed. You know, their temperament, they're, they're very trainable, they're gentle, intelligent, kind, absolutely beautiful dogs. I love Labradors, they're fantastic. Yeah. So the, so the Labradors, Shelby, you got to get up and make a scene. Um, so the Labradors come in three different coloured varieties, uh, black, exactly like Shelby, uh, there's a yellow and there's also a chocolate. Yeah, you don't see many. Don't. I, I call them browns because I'm a poodle person, but they're chocolate. <laughs> they chocolate. Um, you don't see many chocolates anymore. Um, you did probably about 10 years yeah, ago. I felt years. like I there's had a lot of chocolate. Every around. second Labrador coming in my salon was a chocolate. Mm. Labrador. Yeah, big time. Yeah. <laughs> so but you don't see many. So let us know if you guys have one. Yeah, that'd be good. We yeah. Get some photos up. That'd yeah. Be amazing. So Labradors generally come, they, you know, they range in sizes from about 55 centimetres to 57 centimetres. Not too much difference between females and males, but, you know, there's a little bit. And when we measure them, we're measuring them at the withers. So that's right at their shoulders. I would show you if Shelby would get up, <laughs> but on the tip of their shoulders, they're about 55 to 57 centimetres. Um, just a bit about Labrador. So unlike their name actually implies, they were actually originated from Newfoundland, Canada, not Labrador. Yeah, this surprised me. <laughs> this absolutely surprised me. She was like, wow, really? Yeah, I just, I had no idea. I just assumed they come from Labrador, yeah. but they don't. <laughs> they don't. And it wasn't until they actually imported into um, pool in England in the 1800s that they became the Labrador and, you know, eventually started working as a retriever. So the Labrador coat was really, really important when they you know, we're thinking about the work that they were doing. These dogs were bred to, you know, work in freezing cold temperatures in the North Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. So it was really important that they had this nice, thick, dense undercoat to protect them. They also have, like most retrievers, will have an oily 
an oiliness to their coat. It's almost waterproof. It I is. know when I bath, <laughs> we have them in our salon and we bath them that they are really, really hard to break through that surface tension mm. and get deep, deep down, down into, into that it. skin. Because yeah. the water, the coat is designed that the water really runs off because the temperature of the water that they're working in was freezing cold. Yeah. Freezing cold. I wouldn't like to jump in. No, I don't think Shelby would <laughs> like that either. <laughs> She's quite happy being on the mat. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so while they're working, they're actually working with fishermen. Um, they would help them, you know, haul in the nets, retrieve fish um, at that time. Now, in, you know, in the more recent times, I guess they're retrieving game. So, you know, they're, they're now working a lot in England um, alongside the... Uh, other spaniels. <laughs> yeah, the other spaniels, the other retrievers, the other setters, any type of gun dog really. They just work as a as a retriever. With the other field spaniels? Yeah, they do work with the field spaniels. A lot of the a lot of the gun dogs have different roles that they play. Um but yeah, the Labrador, as the name says, is a Labrador retriever, so works as a retriever. So this is why they love um retrieving the ball <laughs> yeah, and playing and they're very playful. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So um, now they're, uh, they're working as guide dogs. They use them as service dogs. They do scent work with them. Um, but really, they're one of the favourite family companions. They're fantastic with kids, great in the house. As you can see, Shelby's pretty laid back for 10 years now and she's, like, happy to lie there and have some fun. But, you know fun in a small package <laughs> yeah we used to have one I don't know if you remember uh, a yellow Labrador retriever called Stoney that used oh, to come into right. our salon right. and he was beautiful and he was an ex-service dog and his name was Stoney <laughs> which we thought was really cute yeah. and funny but he was gorgeous and yeah he was a retired service dog that worked at the airports um, mm. detecting drugs so yeah, how he was <laughs> That so smart. I loved him to death. Um, so yeah. intelligent. They're fantastic. You can teach them anything, really. Yeah. <laughs> Can't they, Charles? Hey, you good girl? Yeah. So we are going to be de-shedding Shelby today. <laughs> so if you're at home and you have a Labrador retriever that needs de-shedding, go and get your dog and bring it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we can groom together. That's no problem. So before we move over to our grooming area, I would just like to go through um, grooming your dog. And this goes for any breed. So when I groom my dogs, I never groom my dogs on the couch next to me or um, on a place where they would normally relax. The bed. The bed. No, bed. God, no. <laughs> You're trying to get rid of dog hair and <laughs> not add to it. Um, so... I always recommend that um, pet owners as well as groomers always take the dog to the same place every time they groom them. So if you need to groom your dog on the floor, use the same mat every single time you're grooming your dog. So this will then start to communicate to the dog that grooming is about to happen. So there's no surprises that when you get that mat out and you get all your grooming equipment out, that the dog actually knows what's about to happen. So we've just popped a yoga mat on the floor um, for Shelby to rest on because she was used to laying on a mat. Um, <laughs> but if you are if you have a larger breed and you do normally prefer to groom that dog on the floor, I do recommend using a non-slip mat. Mm. And I find that yoga mats are pretty um, economical and yeah. um, easy. They're easy, easy to keep clean. And if you do have an older dog as well that has, um, you know, joint problem, they are nice and soft and it gives the dog I like a, a fatigue. Mat. Yeah, they work really well like that. Um, so I do recommend using a yoga mat. So these ones um, I just get from Kmart, mm. and they're nice and easy. So um, just wanted to go through that through that with you guys. So we're going to move Shelby over to the grooming area now. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's pretty <laughs> sleepy. I don't know why. <laughs> she's a Labrador. Yeah. So we're going to move over to the grooming area now. So um, I have done up a little information sheet for you guys, and I'm going to pop that on the screen for you. So it's just got some information about Labrador retrievers and um, grooming them. Yeah, have a nice read and you'll learn some things. 
and we'll see you soon. Welcome back guys. I hope you had time to read that information. I will also pop those that PDF on our website as well so you guys can download that um, at a later date. So I have a grooming table here. So this is a professional grooming table and it actually goes up and down. So it is electric. So what I'm going to do is pop it right down. So this is a this is as far as it goes. Um, and Shelby is used to being groomed on a grooming table. If she wasn't used to being groomed on the grooming table, I wouldn't put her on one. I would actually groom her on the floor or somewhere where she's more comfortable. But she um, is... Really used to it. She's groomed she's, quite often. She's so. really conditioned to the yeah. grooming process. So if you're wanting to um, teach your dog to, to <laughs> begin to get conditioned to the grooming process, it's really important that the dog um, is really comfortable with the table so you're not just lifting the dog up straight away and the dog feeling uncomfortable and unsteady on their feet. So we have a grooming mat on the table so this doesn't slide around and it's got a grip on the back side of it that goes onto the table and then it's nice and soft for the dog while um, standing there. yeah while they're standing there so a good way <laughs> when she decides to get up so a good way to get our dog used to the grooming table is to put two paws up first and then just see how they feel about that process. <laughs> she wants to lie down. <laughs> she's so conditioned to the process. It's ridiculous. Um, so she's quite comfortable with that. And then Janelle's going to just pop her back end up and then she's on the table. So I mean, you can't get any better than that. She's pretty happy, isn't <laughs> She's she? Really happy. Good girl. Wag your tail, hey? Good girl. So I'm going to raise the table very, very gently. And if your dog does start to get a little bit Delicious. of the wobbles and is, um, yeah, a little bit frightened, just slow down. Yeah, slow, <laughs> slow down. down. Steady your table. Just make sure that they're nice and comfortable as you're rising it. So she's pretty comfortable. So we're going to rise it Beautiful. to this level. So Janelle's going to take us through the coat of a Labrador Retriever. Yeah, so the, the Labrador Retriever has what we call a short double coat. Um, so to feel it, it's quite hard to touch. Yeah. Um, their top coat has a, is quite harsh but their undercoat right underneath is soft, dense, 
you know, um, and it falls out everywhere. So really, they are meant to have an undercoat, but if you, they will lose it twice a year. They'll shed pretty much all the year round, really, don't they? Oh, I would say so. Yeah, and then yep. you know, once they when they're shedding, if, if they come when it comes to the summer months and the winter months, they'll have a big shed. So they'll drop their coat, and that's going to promote the right coat to grow through for that climate that's coming, whether it's summer or winter. Yeah. I would say um, a lot of um, Labrador retrievers that I've known shed all year round, mm. but then they have their really big coat drop where they come in and it's usually just before those um, warmer months. Yeah. So for us, it's around September, October, where they come in and there's literally Tons hair, hair. Yeah, <laughs> and it coming just off. starts to fall out. Um, so... Yeah, so one before the summer months, mm -hmm. and then they also have one coat drop before, before the winter, before the winter months. months. So you, uh, you would probably think that um, a Labrador might need their coat for the winter, which is true, but they actually need to remove any of that dead coat. So then yeah. they start to grow another coat that helps them stay warm for those winter yeah. months. Yeah. So depending on their shedding cycle um, <laughs> is, is when. And if your Labrador Retriever is an inside dog all the time, that's when you'll probably notice that your dog is shedding more often. So more if often. they're inside where it's warm and then we have the heater going, they will shed more than what they would if they're outside in a cooler um, yeah. climate, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So we definitely recommend that you brush your lab, I would say, once to twice a week. Yeah. Not only to remove that dead, unwanted undercoat, but it also helps stimulate the hair follicles and it helps promotes remove, the... promotes a new coat as well as helps remove the dead skin cells, which then the new coat can then begin to grow through. Yeah. So... <laughs> We'll so see what if we, we can lower the camera a little bit so we can see each other. There yeah, go. there she That's is. Right. You don't need to see our faces. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to actually use on Shelby today. There's a few different tools that we're going to use. Um, so we've got the de shedding tool. So we've also got some information um, up about this on our um, YouTube channel once we're all on our website. On our website. So what we would start off with doing is the de-shed. De-shedding tool, do you think, Spring? Yeah. So I'll go through the tools quickly first. This is our de-shedding tool. It actually has it actually has little teeth in the tool. We've just swapped we cameras. We've just swapped cameras for a reason. It's <laughs> <all right. laughs> I don't know if they can see the tool now. You might need to swap back over to the yeah. close up one. So there they can go. see, there we back go, back perfect. Up. So if you can see the little teeth, so what actually happens is when we're moving this through the coat, the dead hairs will actually sit in these little teeth and as you're pulling it through, it will start to remove that dead unwanted coat. We also have a firm, this is a universal slicker mm -hmm. um, and it is quite firm and I really, really love it for... Um, the hard coat. Yeah, I love it for golden retrievers. I love it for Labrador retrievers because it is quite firm and the, the pins yeah. come up and then back out. So when I'm pulling that through, it's really going to remove and you can see it's already starting yeah. to remove that dead hair. And then we've also got our you know, flexi. <laughs> our flexi slicker. I love this slicker so much. It is like my go-to with mm. most of my dogs because even if we're just doing um, our dog's head, um, it actually curves around bone it and with muscle the dog's body as you're brushing. Yeah, so it has a firm side and then a softer side. It's not too soft, but 
it's softer. Yeah. Good for your puppies as well. Fantastic for your puppies. Yeah. So if you, you're starting to get your dog used to being groomed, the Flexi Slicker is perfect for that. And you will notice that with these two slickers, that the pins on our Universal Slicker, they are a lot thicker and they're more... Um, set apart from each other whereas our flexi slicker they are closer together and they're a lot finer which actually means that the flexi slicker is going to separate the hair um, a lot faster but I would always use a universal before I use a flexi for that reason that this is your workhorse slicker and then our nice gentle slicker if we're wanting to just remove any dandruff. Anything that's left over, really. Yeah. You can see that's so coming out. That's coming out straight away. And we also have our rubber comb. So I love these. Like mm, It's always in my dog bath. Um, they're great for just massaging through your dog's coat. And I could tell that she would love this. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> she loves it. We do it when she's on the grooming table yeah. in the bath. I house. groom, yeah, I groom yeah, a groom pug that just <laughs> loves this and he makes the most amazing noises, noises when I use it. Like he just thinks it's great. So this is another tool that I absolutely love. Um, okay, and then we've got our comb. So with our comb, this is only a small comb with small teeth. And the reason I use a small tooth comb is because she has short hair. So a Labrador Retriever's coat lays flat to the body. So when I'm moving this comb after I've used my de-shedding tool, so whichever one it may be, either the de-shedding tool or the slickers or the rubber comb that I can pop my metal comb through and I always use the fine tooth end and it just picks up any other little bits of dead hair. It's definitely what you'd go through with the last. Yeah, definitely last because as you can see, when I go to pull this through, the hind leg where we haven't actually gone through with the slicker, it's going to stick. Yeah, and de-shedding your dog should not cause any pain to your dog whatsoever. So your dog should actually enjoy this. Um, one thing I did want to go through with you guys is that when we when we are de-shedding when you when we're de-shedding our dog it's important to look at your dog's coat and understand what areas need de-shedding so if we can um i can see from here but it might be hard because she's black yeah. But um, she does have quite a shiny head, and this might be because she's getting <laughs> pats all the time, on getting the lots yeah. and lots of pats. So then we're naturally removing that dead hair. But as we look at the rest of her body, her body is actually not shiny. There's a little bit of shine from mm. the top coat, yeah. But there is a lot of dull hair in there, and the dull hair <laughs> is the dead hair because it's not attached to the hair. Sure. Anything really. Yeah. The <laughs> sorry, the hair follicle. So oh, I keep brushing while So Janelle will be able to show you once and we can get some hair out to show you the difference in the colour between the hair on the top of her head and then the hair yeah. in the go. brush. So we can definitely see the difference in the coat. So healthy, shiny hair, <laughs> dead, dull hair that needs to be removed. So if your um, Labrador is looking a little bit dull, it is probably all the undercoat and the dead hair that's actually in your dog's um, coat. Look at it, Charles. Yeah. It's all dead, unwanted I hair just... that we don't want floating around the, uh, yeah, the house. Yeah, I just don't think she cares. <laughs> she doesn't. <laughs> And I would say that they're a um, a low maintenance, a low yeah, maintenance. Yeah, low maintenance, definitely low maintenance. Um, but you'd still want to stay on top of it so that you're not finding clumps of hair everywhere. Um, and it keeps that hair growing correctly for the time of the year. 
I guess. Yeah. You keep up your brushing. But only once or twice a week, I think is a good... Yeah. And would you say five to 10 minutes or sometimes 20 minutes? If they'll go for 20, let's do 20. Um, I think if, uh, you know, depending on how your Labrador feels, if they're happy with the process, you know, 20 minutes is good, especially during that big shedding time, you know, before the... That big coat drop. Yeah, before big those coat drop. <laughs> <laughs> before the weather. Yeah. And remembering that our dog's coat actually protects our dog's skin from elements, from mm. environmental elements, from insects, um, all those type of things, from the sun. So it is important that when we are brushing and removing... Um, and using especially this de-shedding tool that we don't over. over yeah. Do you see that a lot? Yeah, definitely. Because you don't want to, you don't want to start removing the coat, the new coat that's going through, growing through. So just, just be careful what coat you're pulling out. Make sure it is that dull, unwanted yeah. dead coat. Um, and then you know we we're not causing any breakage or anything to the to the top coat. Yeah, to that healthy hair mm. that the dog actually needs because. What will actually happen is that that hair isn't ready to be removed from that um, that follicle, and we're forcing it, so it can actually damage that. So it's really important that when we are using, that we understand what coat is left in there and what coat we want to take out. Yeah. So um, again, it's good to really watch as you are using a de-shedding tool and really identify what areas um, need doing. So what would you say are the heavy With shedding the areas? With the I think, you know, generally around the neck, around the shoulder and especially around the rump. It, they will lose a lot of hair uh, around their thighs, down the back of their legs. Um, usually the top coat, the very top, it doesn't really shed that would much you, under coat. Would really. you say they're more heavy shedding here and here because of their um, hips and things like that, the mm. protection yeah, that I would they may say, have needed? Yeah, I would say so. Maybe that's protecting their bones um, while they're working through the freezing cold water. Yeah. <laughs> but not shall we, don't yeah, worry, shall right. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> so before we begin our de-shedding process, I really like to use a coat conditioning spray on any coat I work with. Mm. So this helps protect the coat um, as we're as we're grooming as we're it. Through. Yeah, and also protects the skin. So I'm using the refresh on Shelby today. So that's lemon, myrtle, citrus, and avocado oil. Mm -hmm. So um, the refresh or the relax is probably the best um, collection for the Labrador. Um, I would say that generally works really well. Um, and obviously the puppy collection for puppies. For puppies. Yeah. For all those little babies. <laughs> Maybe. It's actually one of my favorites, the puppies. I, yeah. I love the puppy collection. It's great. <laughs> Um, Janelle just got a beagle, a little baby beagle. So maybe we'll get to see. Is it Toby? <laughs> no, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Toby, yeah. maybe we'll get to meet Toby one day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is um, she's a lot happier laying down and being groomed. So when a dog is in that position where they're just completely content about where they are and what they're doing and laying down or if they prefer to stand up, they might prefer to sit down, especially those larger breeds because it is a lot on those joints to be... Standing the whole time. Yeah, yeah. and especially if you are de-shedding a dog for like 20 minutes, I think that's a long time for a it dog to a, be standing yeah, in that one listen. position enjoy it so if they want to lie down let them lie down it's quite easy to do oh. now she's going to stand <laughs> for us <laughs> and what is their tail used yeah. for it's a rudder actually it was though it, it is a they, it's used to rut oh my goodness <laughs> i'm all tongue twisted now it's used as a rudder as they're going through, through the, the water. water thank you yeah <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I learn a lot during the week. So yeah. <laughs> I'm going to spray Shelby's coat with the Refresh Coat Conditioning Spray. Good girl, Dal. So it's just a light mist over her coat. And what I'm going to do is, is gently pull her or move her skin 
um, forward. Taut, so that it's taut. You want it to be taut, not pulled really tight, but just taut. Yeah, because if I don't and I move this tool through her coat, what can actually happen is, is that the tool can actually start to pinch that skin as I'm going through the coat. So if we gently support her skin by moving it forward, and then I don't know if you can hear, but her tail is like <laughs> wagging the side of me. <laughs> Hold her tail still. Yeah. <laughs> it's always going. Forever. And then just gently moving that through her coat. And we can see the amount of hair that it's pulling out. And I notice when we're using this or any sort of um, de-shedding tool with little teeth in it, that when it doesn't pull out any more hair, either check to see if the tool is full of hair or check the dog's coat. So move the coat and separate it and then check to see if there's any, um, any more undercoat to be removed. Because remember we were talking about um, removing too much. We don't want to remove, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, you don't want to remove the wrong A coat. massive amount yeah. of coat. We yeah. just want to remove the those dead. loose, yeah. dead, dull hair. Coat. Yeah. Good girl. She's Good like, girl. Why are you holding on to my rudder? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> she might need it. So we can see. I'll yeah, just turn her this better. way. And we can see that when I move this through the back of her, how much hair is actually being removed. That's a lot. Well, she seems pretty happy about that. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl, shall we? <laughs> you can so, also de-shed them. Like we like to de-shed when they're dirty. I would say when they're dirty before the bath, but also you can do some de-shedding um, in the bath. In the bath, because what happens is when we pop our dog in the bath, so when the warm water um, eventually yeah, so penetrates <laughs> through their coat <laughs> um, and then we apply the first shampoo, what actually happens is when we run our de-shedding tool or a slicker through the dog's coat, it actually grips onto the hair. So if this coat is clean and we're trying to use a de-shedding tool, um, it actually just slides straight over it. And it's not going to grip onto that hair that wants to come out. Yeah, we want dirty, gritty. Yeah, grippy hair. <laughs> yeah, gritty <laughs> hair coming through. So just gently moving that through. Yeah. Do you want to have a go, Janelle? Yeah, sure. And hold her tail? She yes. might prefer you holding her tail. <laughs> like, again, just hold, make sure that you hold that skin nice and taut, tight, and run your, your de-shedding tool. Or as well, that's another point, sorry, we haven't mentioned. Go with the lay of the coat. You don't want to go against the Never. grain. Never against. If you go against the grain you're going you, you're going to break your dog's coat <laughs> so you just and you're wanna... also going to probably damage the actual um skin mm. um it's really super important that you will never ever go against i don't even go against with a flat coated dog with a slicker or no. a comb no. um, because we don't want to um, upset and irritate the skin yeah which was what we'll kind of talk back a few years ago, always go again. Oh, but now, many yeah, years ago, yeah. yeah. You want to try and just keep it with the layer of the coat. Um, and you can see here with Shelby, so her, you know, her body coat is coming around and coming down through her the back of her rump. So I'd follow that around. Hope my arm's not getting out of the way. Maybe it, I'll get my arm out of the way there. And we do this all over her body. You are going to get more out on those main bits that we spoke about. So around their rump area, around their neck and around their shoulders. One thing I just want to quickly go over with this tool is that I do not recommend using it on their legs. Mm. Um, and I do recommend if you are going to de-shed your dog's legs to use a rubber comb 
And the reason is, is because their legs have bones and this is actually metal. So running that over any bones, I mean, you might have a, a senior. Yeah dog as well so being really super careful if you do have a senior or you are wanting to de-shed legs um, definitely use the rubber comb Mm -hmm. or the softer slicker the the flexi slicker would work all right yeah because i mean grooming is about the dog enjoying the process and understanding that process and feeling really special after (laughs) it and (laughs) and being like oh hey look at me i'm amazing amazing (laughs) (laughs) and then showing the whole family how great they are You can see now, I hope you can see on the camera, you can see how that coat on the top there is really starting to shine through. That's because we're, we are removing that dead, dull um, coat that needs to come out. She's looking quite shiny. Yeah. She's looking good. Good girl. So once we've gone through with our, you can see all that dull hair. Yeah. You can't even pull it out with the um, with your with fingers. Your fingers. No. Then I'd go through with your slicker brush. So it kind of goes in different. You know, you use the de-shedding tool first, then your slicker. Depending on which one, I'd definitely, as Mel said, use your universal slicker first. Yeah. That's gonna that's your working horse, as she said. Yeah. Um, and then move on to your flexi. Yep. And being that she's a senior and she's so conditioned to the process yeah. of grooming that um, she's just like, hey, she's whatever. Yeah, keep brushing. <laughs> More, please. Yeah. <laughs> I find Labradors are really, um, they're great to groom and they really, they don't mind it. They're pretty acceptable to it. That's yeah. Sure. And they learn really fast as well. So um, I find that really easy. So much easier when they learn. That's that's definitely true. And we go through with our comb. And you can see now, now that um, we've gone through with, oh, we're on this camera. Yes, we are. (laughs) (laughs) Now that we've gone through with our de-shedding tool and our working horse universal slicker, you'll see that it's, it's a lot easier to put your work your comb through. So it doesn't get stuck. Like it was so before. if you're if you're trying to use a comb, a metal comb on your dog's um, coat, so any flat coated breed, mm-hmm. and the comb isn't going through, that's a really good indication that your dog has a lot of undercoat um, sort of stuck in there, um, and it can get quite firm underneath that that yeah. coat. So that's a good indication of hey, I need to use another tool, and then go back a step or a step back again to then go yeah, with you your can go back to your de shedder or your slickers. Um yeah. anything like that. You're looking good, hey shall we? <laughs> so do we have any questions? I'm just gonna ask our team, we're all good. Do we get any questions there? Not too sure if I know that one. Do you know that one? No. So we'll have a look though. Yeah, can um the person that <laughs> asked that who asked that, Jake? Um, Lady K and the clown. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, <laughs> Lady <laughs> P. <Faye. Good one. laughs> um, elaborate so we can understand what that is. I haven't heard of that. I haven't. No. Um, maybe someone can let us know. We can maybe have a look. And I can get back to you definitely. That's, yeah. that's so easy. Very easy. We'll Google it. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a look. I'll research. Yeah. I'll do some research. Yeah. Another question is, how do you know how much fur is enough to shed out? So, yeah, so usually um, you can actually see. So remember before we were talking about going back a step and looking at and identifying how much hair is in your dog's coat by the colour of the hair. So if the coat is really super shiny, there will be minimal amount of hair that is going to come out of that coat so we were talking about the top of the dog's head most dogs I would say the top of their heads are nice and 
um, smooth and yeah. shiny, nice and short. We're always patting the head. Yeah, right? so we're when she's on the, the floor, <laughs> you're always patting dog's head. So that's a good indication that there, there's no dead undercoat in her hair mm. in her mm. coat and when we see any dull areas so it's a little bit dull in this area here so we can just gently go through with our deep shedding tool and then it starts to remove that it's dead quite dull a, it's coat. a different texture as well it's quite soft um to touch fluffy to touch rather than you know if you're pulling out the wrong hair it, it becomes a bit coarser yeah harder. and I always like to leave like a little, a little bit, bit in so you know not not loads I mean if your dog's walking off and there's bits of hair dropping <laughs> off definitely take your dog back to the mat and then go through those areas and a good indication is when you go through the coat just gently use your finger and thumb and then just gently pull yeah, and you can see there's actually not there's much, not much to out. come out of her rib cage, but then um, around that back leg there is Maybe a we can pull some from her other side. Yeah, <laughs> there is a little bit more that could come out in this area. So just moving that um, loose skin, skin <laughs> nice and firm, and then I'm I'm not pressing hard. It's just really really gentle. And then just going through, and then you'll begin to get that nice shine through um, through the coat. So it actually won't be dull at all. We're going to change. So we're camera. just going to change to our close up camera. So hopefully, hopefully you can get see. A better look. And then I'm just going to gently move her around. I don't know if she'll mind. She shouldn't mind too much. Good girl, darling. Yeah, she doesn't mind. Tail's <laughs> wagging. Tail's going. <laughs> So and then we can see that nice shine coming through and then pop a little bit more coat conditioning spray in and we can see the shine coming. shining through. So that's her nice healthy hair. So if you just remember healthy is shiny, dull is, is dead. dead. <laughs> that's an easy way. We'll sit here forever brushing hair for sure. Do we have another question? That's it for questions. Does anyone have any questions? If you have any questions, maybe just write in the comment section and we'll be able to answer them for you. We'll give it a few minutes. And you can see in this area here, she does have little... Um, I would say streaks, like little tufts mm. of dead coat coming through. So then I just know that I need to work a little bit harder in that area. And we can see it being removed. And see that nice shine now. That's beautiful. I think it is coming up on there. There we go, Shelby. Good girl. Good girl. And then making sure I don't hit any little bone area. That she's pretty. Got pretty thick here. She's pretty well fed, so <laughs> she's pretty happy. <laughs> so really take care of those areas, especially those senior dogs. We don't want to be running this tool or the it. universal over hip joints or shoulder areas or um, hocks, feet, things like that the bony areas and there is no problem with using a coat conditioning spray every time you de-shed your dog okay. no you're right <laughs> so <laughs> so um even if you're de-shedding your dog or brushing your dog every um or twice a week yeah it's going to add good hydration to that coat as well um to keep it growing through nice and healthy yeah, I love the rubber combs. I know, I do. <laughs> I love them. Dogs They're my favourite in the bar for sure. Dogs love them. There you go. And then once we're finished, we're just going to give a whisper of cologne. And the cologne has the essential oils in it as well, so it adds further shine to her coat. So she is super, super shiny. 
Any more questions come through, gentlemen? Matt says hi. Matt oh. says hi. Hi, Matt. Hey, Matt. I'll Are see you. Going? See you tomorrow? Yeah, see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you, Matt. It'll be good. Okay, so uh, so I have done up a PDF. So it has um, the tools that we've used today. So all the tools that I've spoken about, it'll have a, a picture of those tools as well as a short description. Um, and it also has a little bit of history, a little bit of their code type, mm. um, just some further information for you guys. Um, and you can access that via our website, so melanienewman.com.au. Um, but I'll post it um, in the comments as well. So um, it'll be easy for you guys to access. Now we've got to do a clean up of... Shelby's hair. Yeah, so before. we'll do the clean up of Shelby's hair. Um, so next week, what have we got next week? Next week we have got... Um... We're actually going to be talking about grooming equipment. So yeah, we are exactly going right. to that's be that's speaking that. about all the different tools that we use on all different types of breeds because every Monday at 7 p.m., we want to showcase a different breed, a different dog. So I, I feel like it's important that you guys understand the equipment that yeah, um, the is different going equipment for the different coat types, that different we breeds, use. different coat types. Yeah, all these type of things. So if you guys are interested in grooming, it's definitely one not to be not missed. To miss. um, but yeah. So um, until next time, we will see you during the week and next Monday and we'll just continue on um, grooming de -shedding. <laughs> de -shedding Shelby's de-shedding journey. <laughs> See you guys. Thank you.